9. Buran Space Shuttle As Cold War tensions intensified between the United States and the Soviet Union during the 1950s, the two countries competed to develop superior space technology. Known as the Space Race, the period was also marked by competition to be the first country to achieve space-related milestones, like sending a man to the moon. In 1974, the Soviet Union established the Buran program, which sought to develop a reusable spacecraft. It would be a major way to one-up NASA's space shuttle program. The 56-foot-long, 17-meters Buran shuttle was designed to hold six astronauts and had extra room for cargo and satellites. In late 1988, it launched into space after undergoing 24 domestic test flights. The vehicle completed two full orbits before re-entering the atmosphere and touching down successfully under automatic control, making a great accomplishment that NASA had not yet achieved. But the program was cancelled just three years later, in 1991, when the Soviet Union collapsed. The sole surviving vehicle sits in an abandoned hangar in the former Soviet state of Kazakhstan. Moving it to a museum would have been a complicated and costly task, and there just wasn't enough public interest in the shuttles to justify such an enormous undertaking. But the general consensus seems to have changed. Last year, someone broke into the hangar and spray-painted the shuttle with graffiti, sparking widespread outrage and an ongoing campaign to preserve the spacecraft. 8. The Aguadilla Plane a pilot was moving a passenger plane on the taxiway outside Puerto Rico's Aguadilla Airport in 1992 when the hydraulic system malfunctioned, causing him to lose control of the aircraft. It collided with a parked plane and ended up on fire in a ditch, damaged beyond repair. The aircraft somehow ended up in a large field alongside Route 107. For a while, it was protected by a fence and kept off limits to the public, but the property owner eventually opened the site to curious visitors. Since then, the plane's wings and tail have been removed, and it's become covered in graffiti, both inside and out. There's a staircase leading up to the entrance, but the interior is a lot less sturdy. Little remains of the equipment, leaving the cockpit looking like a gutted-out shell with two steering wheels in it. The pilot and passenger seats have also been removed, and the floors appear to be weak, which explains why visitors are advised to use caution while exploring. Records show that the plane is a Douglas C-54 DDC. It was built in 1943 and could carry up to 60 passengers. Also known as the Skymaster, the aircraft was designed for use by the US military during World War II and the Korean War. During that period, it became immensely popular for both military and civilian use. The C-54 and its civilian counterpart, the DC-4, have been used by more than 30 countries. The last active US military Skymaster was retired in 1974. As of 2020, there were two remaining operational DC-4s serving as historical charter planes in South Africa. 7. UTA Flight 772 UTA Flight 772 was a regularly scheduled passenger flight that traveled from Brazzaville in the Democratic Republic of Congo to Paris, France. It was heading to its destination as usual on September 19, 1989, when a bomb exploded in a luggage compartment, causing the plane to rip apart in midair killing all 170 souls on board. Investigators traced the bomb to Libya, leading them to believe that it was planted as revenge against France for supporting Chad during a recent border dispute with the country. A Parisian court found six Libyan nationals guilty in absentia. They weren't at the trial because their government refused to hand the suspects over to French authorities. The crash was soon forgotten by nearly everyone except for the victim's surviving family members and loved ones, earning it the nickname of the Forgotten Flight. 18 years after the tragedy, they traveled to the crash site with plans to build a memorial and found pieces of the wreck, which had sat undisturbed and untouched by humans for nearly two decades. Volunteers from an organization established by the victim's families and local residents spent the next two months working together to build what was dubbed the world's most remote memorial. They transported stones to the site from 70 miles, 113 kilometers away, and arranged them in a circle measuring 200 feet, 61 meters in diameter. The site is scattered with 170 pieces of broken mirror, one for each crash victim, and one of the plane's wings stands upright in the sand at the circle's edge. Widespread attention was finally drawn to the site in 2013, when someone spotted it on Google Earth. 6. Messerschmitt VF-109 
Throughout World War II, the German Luftwaffe relied primarily on two fighter aircrafts. One of them was the Messerschmitt Bf 109, which had first entered service in 1937 during the Spanish Civil War. The Luftwaffe continued to use it until the end of World War II, and then it went on to serve under the Spanish Air Force until 1965. Several other militaries also used the plane, including the Hungarian Air Force and the Royal Romanian Air Force. During its early years, the Messerschmitt was one of the world's most advanced fighter jets. Nearly 34,000 were built between 1936 and 1945 to keep up with the skyrocketing demand. To this day, it remains the most heavily produced fighter plane in history. But its success came at a cost to the slave laborers at Nazi concentration camps who were forced to build many of the jets. In recent years, a wrecked aircraft sitting upside down on the seafloor near Crete was identified as a Messerschmitt Bf 109. Officials have known about the submerged plane for some time, which rests 89 feet 27 meters beneath the waves. But the wreck managed to evade identification for years, despite Germany's meticulous record keeping of its wartime aircraft losses. It was ultimately determined that the plane had flown in the Battle of Crete in 1941 when the Nazis invaded the island. It was shot down while attacking Allied forces in the region. The pilot, Oberleutnant Bertolt Jung, survived the crash. The Allies took him as a prisoner of war and relocated him to a POW camp in Australia, where he remained until 1947. Jung returned to Germany after the war, where he worked as an interpreter and joined the post-war navy. After retiring in 1973, he became the president of a local Red Cross. He died in 1992. 5. Lady Be Good In 1943, a U.S. Army Air Corps USAAC B-24 Liberator nicknamed Lady Be Good vanished along with its crew of nine men while flying over the Mediterranean Sea. It had just participated in a bombing raid of Naples, Italy, and was en route to Libya when it became the only aircraft to disappear in the mission. After an extensive search turned up no signs of the plane or its missing crew members, officials concluded the Lady Be Good most likely plunged into the sea. An oil survey exploration group discovered the wreck in 1958 while working in the Libyan desert. The aircraft was broken in two large pieces, but was otherwise impressively intact thanks to the dry environment. Even at first glance, it was clear that Lady Be Good had crashed into the desert floor. Two years after the wreck's discovery, several crew members' remains were found strewn throughout the area, along with the diary of co-pilot Robert Toner. The journal revealed that the plane had overflown its base and crashed. Eight of the men initially survived and began walking in a desperate attempt to reach safety. They traveled 85 miles, 137 kilometers, in the oppressive, arid heat before five of the crew members gave up. The three remaining survivors continued for as long as they could, but they also eventually became too weak to push on. By then, it was already a miracle that they were still alive, having survived for eight days in an environment where most people only last for two days with the same amount of water the men had. The ninth missing crew member's fate remains a mystery to this day. What do you think happened to the ninth missing crew member? Tell us in the comments and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. 4. P4YSA and P4YSB In a scene reminiscent of the TV series Lost, there's a wrecked plane tucked away in the jungle on the Dutch Caribbean island of Curacao. It's clear that the weathered and overgrown twin turboprop aircraft has been at the site for a number of years, but nobody seems to know how it got there. Built by the Japanese Nihon Aircraft Manufacturing Company, it flew under Aruba Airlines as a passenger flight codenamed P4YSA. But there are no records of the events that led to the plane ending up at the remote site, and it's unclear whether it crashed or was towed there. Its wings and twin props have been removed, and at one point, there were reportedly plans to turn the aircraft into a restaurant. But the vision never panned out, leaving the plane neglected and at the mercy of nature. P4YSA was one of two of its particular model that Aruba Airlines purchased in 1986. The other plane, P4YSB, was deliberately sunk as an artificial reef off the coast of Aruba after it was damaged beyond repair during Hurricane Lenny in 1999. It sits roughly 40 feet, 12.2 meters beneath the waves, and has become a popular scuba diving attraction. 3. Bangkok Aircraft Graveyard
In 2010, a Thai businessman began buying up old planes and selling their parts for scrap. He parked them on a lot in the Ram Kam Hayang suburb outside Bangkok, where they soon started to rust and became something of an eyesore to the public. Several homeless families have repurposed the disused aircraft into makeshift dwellings. They made the interiors as cozy as possible and have told reporters that it beats living on the street. The unique living arrangement has also given them a chance to earn some much needed cash. Due to the plane's proximity to people's homes, the site has earned a reputation as one of the world's most unique abandoned places and it's become a popular destination for tourists. The families who live on the property allow visitors to look around in exchange for an entry fee, which is known to range between 100 and 800 baht, 3 to 25 US dollars. While the families aren't particularly bothersome to the property owner or their neighbors, there are some concerning safety hazards that come with living on a dilapidated aircraft. The danger became especially evident last year when nearby residents noticed smoke spewing from one of the planes along with a strong chemical odor. Firefighters eventually managed to get the blaze under control and determined that it started in some dry grass, but are unsure of the exact cause. 2. P-40 Curtis Kitty Hawk On June 28, 1942, British Royal Air Force RAF pilot Sergeant Dennis Coppock was tasked with flying a damaged P-40 Kitty Hawk fighter plane to a British airfield in Egypt for repairs. But he never reached his destination and for the next 70 years, the aircraft and pilot's fate remained a mystery. Answers finally came in 2012, when a Polish oil worker stumbled upon the wreck while working in the Sahara Desert. Historians describe the astonishingly intact plane as the aviation equivalent of Tutankhamun's tomb. Its guns and ammo were still on board and most likely hadn't been touched since the day of the crash, leaving it frozen in time. Bullet holes in the aircraft's spine suggest that Copping may have attempted an emergency landing after being shot at. But the P-40 was already damaged before its final fateful flight, and this may have also had something to do with why it crashed. Copping's remains were absent from the scene, indicating that he survived the wreck and tried to reach safety on foot. His remains were found a month after the plane's discovery, roughly 3 miles 4.8 kilometers from the crash site, along with a piece of torn parachute a metal button dated to 1939, and a keychain bearing the number 61. 1. Boeing 720 For more than 24 years, an abandoned Boeing 720 passenger plane sat near the runway at an airport in Nagpur, India. Its origins were somewhat of a mystery until late last year, when a Twitter user from St. Louis, Missouri named Chris Croy posted a series of viral tweets blaming his father, Kevin Paul Croy, for the aircraft's presence. He explained that the plane had caught the attention of his dad, who's an aircraft mechanic, during the early 90s at the Brownfield Municipal Airport in San Diego. Its owner had allegedly abandoned it for reasons that remain unclear to this day. By then, the aircraft was nearly 30 years old. A retired businessman and plane enthusiast from India named Sam Verma asked Croy if he could get it running again. Croy explained that the plane wasn't commercially viable under US standards but that it could be used in India. He was confident that he could make it fly and get it there. Croy worked to restore the plane's airworthiness, while his mother took care of the necessary paperwork to obtain takeoff permission from the Federal Aviation Administration FAA. Finally, a year later, Croy and Verma boarded the aircraft and flew it to India. The plane reached its destination, but began experiencing engine problems during its first flight in India, forcing its pilots to make an emergency landing at Nagpur. A dispute over payments and dues ensued, according to the younger Croy, preventing any work from being done. In 2015, it was moved to a nearby field, where it remains today. Quartz got in touch with Verma, who confirmed bits and pieces of Chris Croy's version of events. He said that there were no Americans on the plane when it was flown to India, calling the accuracy of Croy's story into question. Verma also clarified that the private company that owned the plane had a disturbing track record of unprofessional conduct and poor maintenance. As a result, the company went broke and abandoned three of its aircraft, including the deserted 720 at Nagpur. Thanks for watching. Which one of these abandoned aircrafts fascinated you most? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.